In this video, I'm going to talk about different classes of antidepressants and then talk about their clinical applications as well as their side effects. So one thing you should know in general for all antidepressant medications is that with the exception of the bupropion, all antidepressant medications are associated with the sexual dysfunction. The first classes of antidepressant are serotonin reuptake inhibitors, including paroxetine, fluoxetine, citalopram, as well as sertraline. And these medications, you should know that they take four to eight weeks to have an effect. So if you prescribe them for a patient and then they come back two weeks later to your office, say that they don't feel happy and they're still feeling depressed, you should remind them that it takes four to eight weeks for these medications to take effect. And then you must be aware of the serotonin syndrome. So if these medications are combined with other drugs, like for instance, TCA, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, uh, SNRIs, if there is too much level of serotonin in the uh, nervous system, it will cause serotonin syndrome, which presents with myoclonus, altered mental status, fever, and hyperthermia. And this is a life-threatening condition that must be treated with serotonin receptor antagonists like ciproheptadine. The next classes of antidepressants are tricyclic antidepressants, which blocks the reuptake of norepinephrine and serotonin. Examples of these medications include desipramine, clomipramine, imipramine, doxapine, or amitriptyline. And then these medications are helpful for the treatment of major depression. And then given that they have anticholinergic effects, you can use imipramine to treat bedwetting in children. And then clomipramine can also be used for the treatment of obsessive compulsive disorder. And then side effects of these medications include anti cholinergic effects which will cause for instance dry mouth urinary retention constipation or sedation and then they can also have alpha 1 blocking properties which causes uh, postural hypotension and then finally they cause qrs prolongation which increases the risk of arrhythmia so if there is a tca toxicity with a patient that develops arrhythmia then you can provide them with the sodium bicarbonate. So given that TCA is a weak acid, by providing sodium bicarbonate, it will cause alkalinization of the urine and thus it enhances the excretion of the TCA in the urine and help reverse its toxic effects. And then one last point you should know is that the secondary TCAs like nortriptyline have less anticholinergic effects and thus this medication is safer for elderly patients because there's a decreased risk of sedation compared to the other TCA medications. The next classes of antidepressants are monoamine oxidase inhibitors, which increases the availability of biogenic amines, like for instance, norepinephrine, serotonin, as well as the dopamine. And these medications are particularly good for the treatment of atypical depression, where the patient is depressed, but at the same time, they have insomnia or hyperphagia. They're also good for the treatment of hypochondriasis. And then you should also be aware that monoamine oxidase inhibitors can increase the risk of hypertensive crisis in patients that consume tyramine containing foods like for instance cheese and wine and thus these patients must be treated with phentolamine to help reverse the hypertensive crisis. Next we have the atypical antidepressants like bupropion which increases the availability of the norepinephrine and dopamine and this medication unlike the rest of the antidepressants does not cause sexual dysfunction. Now this medication is an excellent tool for smoking cessation but you should be aware that it decreases the seizure threshold. So there is an increased risk of seizure in patients that are prone to seizure development. So therefore you should not use bupropion in patients that are bulimic. Next we have mirtazapine that acts as alpha-2 and serotonin 5-HT2 antagonists. And this medication is associated with sedation as well as increased appetite. 
and thus it's good for the treatment of depression in patients that are anorexic as well as patients that have insomnia. Next we have trazodon which inhibits the serotonin reuptake and this medication the side effects include sedation and priapism and so given that it causes sedation again trazodon is a good medication for the treatment of insomnia in depressed patients. Next we have venlafaxine and duloxetine both of which are classified as SNRIs that will inhibit the reuptake of the norepinephrine and serotonin and the side effect of these medications is hypertension so venlafaxine is good for the treatment of panic disorder while duloxetine is good for the treatment of neuropathy in diabetic patients and then finally we have macrotiline which blocks the norepinephrine reuptake and then its side effects include the sedation and orthostatic hypotension So next I would like to go through the application of different antidepressant medications. So as I discussed we have a quite a few different antidepressant medications and so depending on the other comorbidities that a patient have you can select which type of antidepressants you would like to proceed with. Patients with social phobia, post-traumatic stress disorder, bulimia, anxiety as well as panic disorder all of them can be treated with SSRIs. You should also note that you should avoid bupropion in patients with bulimia because it increases the risk of seizures. You can also use SNRIs as well as bosperon in patients that have anxiety. So bosperon is actually stimulating the 5-HT1 serotonin receptors and thus unlike the other anxiolytic medications like benzodiazepine and phenobarbital, bosperon is not associated with sedation, addiction, or tolerance development. So the way I memorize that bosperon is good for anxiety is that I keep reminding myself that I always relax on the bus. So no anxiety when I'm getting on the bus because someone else is already driving. For panic disorder, for chronic treatment, you should provide SSRI, while for acute treatment, so for instance, if a patient presents to your office and is already presenting with symptoms of panic disorder, then for acute treatment, you can provide them with benzodiazepines, like for instance, alprozolam, to relieve the symptoms. But if you want to treat them chronically, then you will have to put them on SSRIs. Patients with obsessive compulsive disorders can also be treated with SSRIs. In addition, you can use clomipramine, which is a TCA. Patients with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder should be treated with stimulants such as methylphenidate and amphetamine. Bipolar patients should be treated with mood stabilizer like lithium carb bamazepine as well as valproic acid or you could also treat them with the atypical antipsychotics. Patients with schizophrenia are also treated with atypical antipsychotics and then finally we have the Tourette syndrome which is a neurological disorder of the motor and phonic text that starts in the childhood and this disorder must be treated with the dopamine receptor antagonist like for instance halo Peridol, as well as flu phenazine, both of which are high potency typical antipsychotics. This disorder can also be treated with tetrabenazine, which depletes the dopamine pool by blocking the VMAT2. And VMAT stands for vesicular monoamine transporter. And so, by blocking the uptake of monoamine into synaptic vesicles, tetrabenazine causes depletion of the dopamine pool. And that concludes our discussion of this topic.